Welcome back. Uh, we have got uh, media of, former media officer of the Super Eagles and top Nigerian journalist. He is uh, now on the line. I'm glad to say he is on the line with us now. Hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, Tolu. Good afternoon. All right. So let's get into it very, very quickly. It was... Um, if you could call it a very weird weekend for Nigerian football. First up, uh, the news filtered in that uh, the uh, former Super Eagles winger and uh, now former Super Eagles coach, if indeed George had uh, quit his position, there was a lot of um, uncertainty as to the reasons why he actually quit the job. A couple of people said it was uh, down to him falling out with the NFF. Uh, some even said that he was actually sacked. Um, what exactly is the situation? He resigned and why did he do that exactly? Uh, well, um, we've seen um, the letter, Fenidi's resignation letter, we've seen it uh, on social media, um, and he has confirmed that that letter came from him. Um, he, re he resigned uh, because uh, of the changes made to the technical crew. Um, and of course, we, we, we gather from very reliable sources that um, he didn't see it coming because he had meetings with the NFF executive committee. After that, he had meeting with uh, the sports ministry. The sports minister was in attendance and some directors in the ministry. And all the discussions were around, around revamp our World Cup aspirations uh, and uh, ensure that um, we salvage what is left of the campaign. We still have six games to go. Um, so I was thinking that we'll probably get some robust uh, uh, very detailed report of the plans uh, to revamp and to to try to ignite our World Cup dreams, and then suddenly it was it was a resignation letter. So I think um, he just felt, I mean, it's a sign of uh, loss, loss of confidence in his abilities for you to be talking about tinkering with the technical crew after just two games. Um, but the fact is that he's, he's, he's resigned. He's confirmed it. And so we're back to where we were after the AFCON when uh, the coach as contract was not renewed. So we have, we have to start to shop for a new coach, whether foreign or local, and uh, do whatever we can as quickly as possible. All right. The, the other problem here is, um, obviously, the Super Eagles, it's not a Finidi problem, to be honest. Um, they played four games in the qualifiers. Finidi judges only be responsible for two of those games. Nigerians must remember. And the first two games, which included a home game against Lesotho and a game as a neutral venue, the Super Eagles failed to win those games. Those were games between Zimbabwe. They played against Zimbabwe and against Lesotho. What has happened to the Super Eagles lately as far as these World Cup qualifiers are concerned? Because it's not a issue about everything going wrong with Finidi George. It's not going particularly well in this World Cup qualifiers. Where does the problem really lie? Well, I don't know. I think the problems that we saw um, in those first two games handled by Pesero, we, we didn't get off to a good campaign at home to Lesotho. Uh, and then, of course, as you said, the game against Zimbabwe in Rwanda. We have followed up in that same line with those two games against uh, South Africa and the uh, Benin Republic. Um, I, I think the, the, the four games we've played so far, we clearly didn't have a leader in the team. Um, and it looked like the team isn't motivated to play. And I'm asking myself, what motivation do you need to play in a World Cup qualifying game if the World Cup is not enough motivation for you? So that's a worry for me. Um, and, and I felt that um, the Eagles didn't play, I mean, like they wanted to win. They didn't play with hunger. They didn't play with urgency. Um, and then if you look at those games, there were games in which we missed uh, the leader figure in the team. Um, no Musa, no Air Kong, no Mero, no Simen. Uh, so maybe, maybe the spine of the team that we saw driving that team during the AFCON, um, and we felt, look, they have shown that, look, these guys can raise their games and they can go out there and put their bodies on the line. But it looks like um, we still have more work to do. If, if uh, We want to see the Eagles play with urgency, play with excitement, play with uh, a lot of passion, uh, with urgency. It looks like we still have a lot of work to do. If we want to see those kind of Eagles 
uh, on display. Mm. All right, so I, I cannot have you on this show and not ask about the outburst from uh, the Super Eagle striker Victor Simeon uh, regarding the NFF and to statements uh, that haven't really been substantiated that Finidi George uh, made about him. He went on a tweet, uh, on an Instagram rant uh, over the weekend. You have had close um, dealings with Super Eagles players, including Victor Simeon. Did that come to you as a surprise when you saw those pictures over the weekend? You're talking about Victor Simeon? Yeah. Yes. It's a very, it's a very disappointing situation. Very, very disappointing situation. And I think, um, I think the Nigeria Football Federation need to come up. There were plans with to do that in the panel. What stalled it? There's, there's a need to have a code of conduct. There's a need for players, officials, coaches. Um, to be guided by rules and regulations of what they can do. Uh, there should be a guideline on how conflicts can be resolved, uh, conflicts can be addressed, and there should be a guideline on how players interact with themselves and interact with their coaches. Uh, what we saw, the outburst we saw, is, is unpalatable, is detasteful, is, 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 is uh, capable of breaking team spirit, it's not in good taste, uh, and I think the Federation needs to do something very urgently about it. All right. Thank you very, very much for talking to us. I wish you had more time, or probably we'll talk on subsequent uh, bulletins here on AfroSport. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.